here with two ladies who are doing something really great for our community. For the whole month of March, they've been giving away purses filled with a bunch of feminine hygiene items to homeless women. Meet Sharon Wood down there at the end. Sharon, hello. And Denise hello. Williams, who spearheaded this great community project. It's called the Modesty Movement. I think this is such a great idea. Thank you for being here with Thank us. We really appreciate it. Thank and you. a quick shout out, your sorority sisters with Angela Rozier, yes. one yes. of our favorites yes. here yes. at WPBF. Yes. Uh, tell us about this project and how it got started. Well, it's a community service project for the West Palm Beach Alumni Chapter mm -hmm. of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And what we're doing is um, gathering items for mm -hmm. purses for homeless women and for women that are on their, on their menstrual cycle. Uh -huh. We never even consider what point. they go through. And why did you know that there was a need? I didn't until I was researching items just to put in the purse. Mm -hmm. And these are items that are not, not normally donated. Can both of women. you share what sure. what are we talking about? What's in here? We're talking about items that women who are homeless can use during their menstrual cycle because in uh, as the project chair when Denise was researching what to put in the purses, mm -hmm. she came up with the research that there was a need for women when they're on their cycles to have those feminine products that we sometimes take for granted. Mm -hmm. So we're filling purses with several items such as sure. the um, ever famous pads that uh -huh. we may need in all shapes and sizes. Plus, we're giving them feminine powder. Denise, would you like to go in one of your bags? I see I some wipes. I see you also even have you know, toothbrushes, yeah. yes. toothpaste, Tylenol. Yes. And little we're razors. Giving, mm -hmm. We're giving them wipes, pain reliever, mm -hmm. because they suffer a lot from infections because mm -hmm. they can't keep the area clean. And also a gift card for a meal wow. at a, a restaurant. That's a really good, so this you've been doing in the month of March, do you want to expand it? Do you want this to keep going? Yes, we have had some sorors that expressed an interest that this be an ongoing project because, you know, women bleed every month. Sure, so, absolutely. Yes. Um, what kind of support have you seen from the community and maybe what kind of support do you still need if people are going, wow, this is a great idea and I want to help out? Yes, we have had some community partners, some local churches and business owners, and we are looking to continue to um, have donations um, to accept it. That's fantastic. You see your, um, yeah, I like your, your logo <laughs> yeah. right yes, there. And, yes. and then they get the purse as well. They yes. get a purse as well. I think that's a fabulous idea. Anything else you'd like to add that you want people to know out there? Yes, if you want to donate, you can contact us. Um, if it's, is it okay for me? Absolutely, to please yeah. do. So contact me at 561-236-0238. Yes. That's 561-236-0238, and we'll make arrangements for a collection mm -hmm. so that we can um, meet our goal, exceed our goal of over 100 purses. That's fantastic. Yes. You're helping a lot of people. Anything else you'd like to add? I would just like to add that you asked how do we know about this. We are a public service organization who's all about serving our community. So wherever there's a spoken or even an unspoken, spoken need, you can know that the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta sorority will be there to meet that need and that's what we're doing today and beyond with the modesty movement. So wherever there's a need, spoken or unspoken, transforming lives, impacting communities, that is what Delta Sigma Theta sorority is doing through the West Palm Beach alumni chapter and we're thankful for this opportunity. And we're thankful for, for you women in our community because yes. we know it's not just this project. You guys do so much for yes, our community. So thank yes. you very much, and thanks for sharing. If you want to learn more about their project or to help out, head to our website, WPBF.com. We've got all the information that you need. All right, thank, thank you so you. much. We'll send things over to you, Sharon. <laughs> All right, thank you. Continuing in our health headlines, also talking to women for the first time in more than 20 years, the FDA wants to change mammogram standards. Under the proposal, doctors would have to provide patients with more information on their breast density after mammograms. The dense breasts raise the risk of developing breast cancer. They also impact the accuracy of the mammogram. The proposal will now go through a 90 day public comment period before officials decide if it'll be put into practice. Practice. And Walgreens starts selling cannabis based products in some of its stores. This move comes about a week after CVS announced that it would sell CBD products as well. It'll soon carry a line of topical products that are infused with CBD, such as creams, sprays, roll ons, some lotions. These products will only be available so far in nine states. And we have them highlighted there on that map. You see that does not include Florida. Facebook and Instagram are taking new steps against online hate speech. They no longer allow content which praises or supports white nationalism. Those searching for white supremacist material will be forwarded to a group that helps people leave the far right. 
Samsung is showing how durable its new foldable phone is. The company released this video showing robots folding their new phone over and over and over again. <laughs> Samsung promises that that phone will be able to outlast 200,000 folds and unfolds. Interesting. And when you think about a screen being able to do that, that is a, a good thought. I think most people with iPhones just worry about dropping their Yeah, phone. that's true. And if you don't, out, if your phone doesn't outlast, perhaps you're on your phone too much. Yep, <laughs> sign right there, huh? Okay, how about this? A big announcement from Disney came out this morning. This had the newsroom buzzing. Yeah. Its parks are going to completely smoke-free, and that's just one of several new items banned from Disney World. Let's talk about it. Starting May 1st, smoking will not be allowed inside any of its theme or water parks. There will be designated smoking areas outside of the parks. Also going on the band list, double wide strollers, stroller wagons and loose and dry ice. The double wide strollers. I think that's one of the toughest. That's what has the parents buzzing too. in the newsroom. But it's, yeah. there are dimensions online that you can look at to see. OK, because I mean, some of those strollers are huge. They are. But what if you have twins? True. I mean, there, yeah. you, there are, yeah, there are dimensions. You gotta so figure all that if out. If you've got one, you're gonna want to check it out before you head because you don't want to get caught. Pull out the measuring tape. Okay. Well, first words for little ones. We'll keep talking about kids. You know, that's always a really special. It moment. really is. The California couple's nanny cam captured their child's first word. Take a look. Hey Google, play the baby hey, song. Oh. Ah, in case you missed it, that baby said, "Hey Google." The baby's dad says he was shocked and ran to tell his wife. The video went viral, as you can imagine, and Google reached out saying they loved the story. Sorry, Mama and Dada. I think Move over for Google. I think it's funny. You can see the dad go, and then he immediately ran to get the, get the mom. <laughs> it's so funny. We'll be right back. <laughs>you're watching WPBF 25 News at 9. 930. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Erin Guy and I'm Farron Salih. We have a lot of news coming your way, but between how cool it got last night, the wind that <laughs> sure. picked up, 
Sandra, there's a lot going on. Well, and there's a high surf advisory as well as a small craft advisory because the wind's really taking a toll on the waters. Here's Boca. I mean, it's looking kind of gray out there right now, which makes it feel cooler. We have some sun trying to break through in spots, but the northeast wind brisk at 21 miles an hour, making that 73. I feel a little cooler than 73. We'll hit the mid 70s at best this afternoon and have a chance of showers, at mainly at about the evening hours after 5 o'clock or so through tonight. Kind of splash and dash stuff, much like last night. Right now, though, things are quiet. I've got your seven day forecast on deck, so stay tuned. Sandra, thank you. Breaking Commitment 2020 news. A South Florida mayor has just thrown his hat in the ring for president. The promise of America belongs to all of us. That's why I'm going to be running for president, to be your champion. You heard it right there. Wayne Messam, the mayor of Miramar, made his campaign announcement in this video he released just a short time ago. Messam, who is a Democrat, says he will formally kick off his campaign on Saturday during a rally at the Florida Memorial University in Miami Gardens. Now, if his name sounds familiar, that's because he played wide receiver at Florida State back in the 90s. More than 100 people packing a Coral Springs Town Hall to discuss mental health and suicide prevention. And this is in response to two suicides within just a week. One former student at Stoneman Douglas High School and one teenager who was a current student there. The father of a former MSD teacher says the students and the educators have a tough time. They have to be strong every day. And I drive by that school and I'm looking at that 1200 building. How can anybody literally go back into that school? They don't know where to turn. They don't know where the resources are. And if in fact they do have, the, if it does get out where there are resources, are they adequately funded? Mm -hmm. uh, do you need money to, uh, to, I mean, what about folks that can't afford? A lot of options out there and some of the answers were given last night. Those who couldn't attend were able to send in their questions from Twitter. In addition to that meeting, a wellness and counseling center has opened up in Coral Springs. Our Jana Caserta stopped by the center to show us just how it will help residents and survivors. It's not how a wellness center would typically first open. There's no signage out front, no landline, and organizers are still designing the space. But when two Marjorie Stoneman Douglas students took their own lives within the span of a week, the center opened its doors a month early. Statistics show that um, long term, there can be more deaths by suicide following a shooting than from the shooting. And we are going to do everything that we can here in Parkland, Coral Springs and at Eagles Haven to change those statistics if we humanly can. Eagles Haven is aiming to provide a safe space for students, parents, teachers, staff and anyone impacted by the tragedy in Parkland. What we want to do here is just have fun and have a place where people can stop in and uh, we're going to do yoga and kickboxing and drumming and whatever the teens want um, and also uh, the families and the teachers. Well, I think that it can really help a lot of students who come in here and it's not like, let's go to therapy. No, let's, you know, let's relax. Let's play some games. Let's, let's, you know, make new friends here. Annabelle Claproot is a high school junior who transferred out of Stoneman Douglas. Now she's helping in the healing process, telling organizers how kids like her want to heal. I don't want to sit in a room and sit across from you and talk about my feelings because I don't know my feelings. I don't know how how I'm how how I am yet. And I think with the crafts and with the activities, it can slowly bring it out and not be so direct. They want to make it very clear. Eagles Haven is not a therapy center. It's a place to rediscover wellness and restore hope. One teen just wanted to cry yesterday and didn't want to talk. Another teen wanted to tell his story about the actual shooting. If someone needs or wants therapy, Eagles Haven is also designed to be a one stop shop to connect the community with the resources they need. And if you or someone you know needs help, call the National Suicide Prevention Line at 1-800-273-8255. It's available 24 hours a day. That was Gianna reporting. Breaking overnight out of Bangladesh. That's where several people may have jumped to their deaths, all to escape a massive building fire. Mark, what's the latest there? We know, unfortunately, there are deaths this morning. We just learned seven people have died. 
20 firefighters have been injured in this blaze. Now this is how it looked right when the fire first broke out. You see the heavy smoke. You're going to see some flames too coming from the 19 story building there. Now people were seen shouting from the windows because they were trying to escape the fire. And those military helicopters have also joined the rescue operation. We'll bring you brand new information as we get it. But right now confirmed, we just got this in. Seven people killed, more than 20 firefighters injured. Farron. All right, Mark, thank you. Also right now, a man is in custody after a deadly shooting rampage in Seattle. It left two people dead, injured two more. This all started when police say that the man shot a woman that he was trying to carjack. He then opened fire on a packed city bus, injuring the bus driver. From there, they say the suspect started firing at random cars, killing one driver. He managed to steal a car and during a police chase, he slammed into a car, then killing that driver. Police are calling this a random, senseless act. New this morning, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos is defending her decision to slash funding for Special Olympics. She says it's not a federal program and she had to make, quote, a difficult decision with the budget. DeVos told Congress that she believes Special Olympics is an awesome organization that will be well supported by philanthropic sectors. Shand argues that she's now being mischaracterized because of these cuts. In the wake of two deadly plane crashes, Boeing unveiled an overhaul to the software system of its 737 MAX aircraft. It came the same day Congress questioned Boeing executives and the FAA. The official causes of the crashes are still being determined, but the focus has been on an automatic safety feature that may have incorrectly forced the nose of each plane to dip. Boeing software upgrade will make it easier for pilots to recover control of the airplane. The company plans to submit their final compliance documents to the FAA by the end of the week. British Prime Minister Theresa May has offered up her job in exchange for her Brexit deal. She says that she would quit within weeks if they vote to leave the European Union. May's offer is a last-ditch effort to bring enough of her colleagues on board to push her twice-rejected-now divorce deal over the line. Next at 9, saying goodbye after 30 years. Now how the West Palm Beach Police Department thanked and honored one of their own as he gets ready to start a new chapter in his life. Stranger Things making a return to Halloween Horror Nights. When we come back, what we now know about the new haunted house and just how much different it's going to be than last year's, which was apparently a pretty big hit. So we've got the details as you're watching WPBF 25 News at 9.
Welcome back. New details in the investigation into that Norwegian cruise ship that set sail during a bad storm. The Norwegian Maritime Authority says the engines failed because of low levels of lubricating oil. The Viking Sky sent out a May Day signal on Saturday when all four engines stopped. This caused colossal waves to flood the decks, prompting helicopters to have to fly by, helping evacuate every passenger on board. In fact, a local couple just returned home from that nightmare at sea. Well, Ron Burke spoke to the husband who said at one point he didn't think they were going to make it out mm. alive. A huge wave washed over from the North Sea and blew out the door. It didn't blow the door open. It blew it off its hinges. Ken Treadwell is describing the violent scene he and his wife Cindy thought they might not survive. The Viking Sky cruise ship carrying 1,300 passengers and crew encountered engine trouble Saturday afternoon off the coast of Norway and was helpless as a vicious storm tossed the ship and frightened those on board. People, table, chairs, everything washing forward at us. With waves continuously washing into the ship, the vessel and those on board seem to be at the mercy of the storm. I talked to people later who, who went uh, under the water and thought they were going to drown. Strapped in life jackets, Ken and Cindy stuck side by side, cold and wet, before they were finally airlifted to a rescue helicopter several hours after the ordeal began. Ken credits the ship's crew and the rescuers, along with friends he was able to contact from the ship that sent out prayer chains. Ken and Cindy have been married for almost 48 years. They have three children and five grandchildren. What began as a 12-day journey to see the Northern Lights, which they did, turned into a stare down with death, which they won. Now back at home in Wellington, Ken allowed himself to think about what they might have lost. You think about the grandchildren. You think about what you're going to miss in the future. and It's, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's tough. Tough when you think you're going to die. Wow, puts so much in perspective there. Viking gave refunds and gifted the couple with a free cruise in the future. They said that it'll probably take uh, a while if they take that free offer, but right now they're taking a break from the sea. I don't blame them. I'm glad they're okay. Well, McDonald's is backing off those lobbying against minimum wage. Companies nationwide have been raising pay to hire and retain employees. In a letter to the National Restaurant Association, McDonald's said the wage increases could be phased in or should be phased in. The company says the new employees at corporate owned stores make more than $10 an hour. Federal minimum wage is $7.25, but range state to state. Well, here's a little hope that your workplace lottery pool isn't totally hopeless. And some New Hampshire employees hit the lotto. 30 furniture store co-workers claimed a $1 million lottery prize. Look at that. Make it rain, you guys. <laughs> the employees guessed all of the winning numbers except the Powerball, although they missed the multi-million dollar prize. Each winner received about $33,000. Hope you like your co-workers and trust them to all. Shell it out evenly. <laughs> that's what they say. Always do some kind of a contract. Oh, Sandra. yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Get it in writing. 944. Hey, take a look at a uh, satellite radar. Nothing really to show you right now. Much other than some sprinkles offshore that are trying to make it to the ground, but not really too successful. You could run into a little drizzle or a sprinkle down in South County, though. Right now, the temperatures have risen significantly, especially from this morning when we were in the mid 50s in Okeechobee. Right now, we're sitting at 66 degrees and it's 72 in Jupiter and West Palm and through Boca, 71 in Vero and Port St. Lucie. A lot of consistency. Everybody's kind of evening out. We'll hit the mid 70s to upper 70s this afternoon and that 30% chance of rain really has applied already and so midday we're going to be fine. I think late this afternoon we'll bring back some shower chances in through tonight. See the winds are going to hold their grip across South Florida for one more day. Not as high as yesterday, but every now and then you're going to get a fierce gust. So heads up 65 tonight. And again, that's when we have a better chance of those showers running in off the Atlantic Ocean with that northeast wind at 10 to 20 still 20 to 25 knots on area waters. And whoa, look at this. I mean, that's not a mistake. 14 to 17 feet for the wave heights, high surf advisory in effect through tomorrow morning and also a high risk of rip currents. It is not really a great beach day recreationally, although it will be cool to view. Headlines breezy today, the marine conditions uh, elevated for the next couple of days and then a sunny seasonable weekend is on the menu for South Florida as we wrap up March.
Here's South Florida's most accurate seven day forecast. Upper 70s Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 81 and 82 respectively with a lot of sunshine as we head into April. Monday, slight chance of showers and then as we head into Tuesday, a better chance of some scattered showers and even downpours. Sandra, thank you. Well, in just four days, you'll no longer be able to take tropical fish from the waters around Phil Foster Park. Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission voted last month to approve the ban. People come from all around the world to dive right near the Blue Heron Bridge to look at the marine life, and they have complained about the removal of tropical fish. Again, four more days, and you won't be able to do it anymore. Over to Boynton Beach, where there could soon be a new Chick-fil-A. But first, the fast food chain will have to overcome some hurdles. According to the Palm Beach Post, the planned location is in Canyon Town Center. That's right off Boynton Beach Boulevard and Lyons Road. That area isn't zoned for drive through restaurants, so Chick-fil-A would need a special permit. The Starbucks in the shopping center also had to get that same permission. Lion Country Safari is in the running for Best Wildlife Park in USA's Today's annual 10 Best Award, and they need your help to land that coveted title. Lion Country is one of 20 wildlife parks nominated. Now you can vote online once a day through April 22nd. We have a link on our website, WPBF.com, if you want to help them out. All right, Seminoles fans, get ready. The Sweet 16 games kick off tonight. Number four seed Florida State will face number one Gonzaga. Tip off is at 7 o'clock. I wore my Knowles colors. Yes, hoping you did. That did they you pick them? I did. Okay. Well, for this round, we won't keep going okay. in the brackets past that. Another game, though, to watch for you tonight. Number one Virginia takes on 12 seeded Oregon. The Ducks are the lowest ranked team to make it into this round. You know, we want some more upsets. That would be nice. It would be fun. That would be really nice. Well, then it's on to Minneapolis next week. U.S. Bank Stadium getting ready to host the final teams. Crew has just finished working on the court. Here's a look at the final design. Ah, that's pretty. And starting on April 6th, the remaining four teams will battle it out on the court, hoping to win that coveted trophy. Well, exciting news for Game of Thrones fans. Once the series finale airs in May, HBO has a little present. Yeah, help us out here. HBO is releasing Game of Thrones, The Last Watch. It's a two-hour feature documentary that chronicles the making of the final season on Sunday. It'll air right after the season ends May 26th, so you get your last little fix <laughs> of Game of Thrones. Stranger Things back for its second year at Universal Studios. The gang from Hawkins, Indiana returns to Halloween Horror Nights following last year's success. The Haunted House will focus around season two and three. Some far, some so far, some of the confirmed scenes are Chief Hopper's cabin and the Starcourt Mall, which has was teased in one of the new season's early trailers. So you can tell I do not watch Stranger Things, but if you do, you know what I'm talking about.